You're very welcome to St. Colonel's this morning. Can I ask if you have a mobile phone, if you could switch it to flight mode, please? Because even though it may be on silent, it still sends and receives data that interferes with the sound system, particularly for those who are joining us on the live stream. So if you could put your phones to flight mode, that would be useful. We will begin Mass with hymn number 964, 964 from the hymn book. Can I invite you please to stand? You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your hearts the more at once, and they will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. If you pass through raging waters, in the sea you shall not drown. If you walk amid the burning flames, you shall not be harmed. If you stand before the power of them, and death is at your side, know that I Good morning. morning. Boys and girls, with your parents, it's lovely to see you. We've met for Mass the last few months in your class at school. We met the other day online. So it's a great pleasure to, to welcome you in person as part of your preparation for First Holy Communion. So good morning, boys and girls. Oh, now I know you can, do, you can do better than that. You and I, boys and girls, are the only ones not wearing masks. So I think we could probably make ourselves heard a little more loudly. Do you think we could? Let me manage that. So we'll try again. Good morning, boys and girls. Well done. That's great. That gives us all confidence that you're here. And I know you're not used to being awake at this time on a Sunday. But it's a beautiful day. And it's an important day. So we recognize that we gather in the presence of God together with those that love us, both in your own home and those of the parish community who are going to be praying for you for the next few months in a special way as you prepare for a special day, a milestone in your lives as young members of the church. So we rejoice to be together in the presence of God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So welcome, one and all, to our celebration of the first Sunday of Lent. Welcome if you're here in person. Welcome if you join us online. Thank you for being there or here. Please remember us in prayer as we do you. 
the gospel of the first Sunday of Lent is always about the temptation of Jesus, always about his solidarity with us, always about his assuming fully the human condition. How does he remain good in the face of temptation? Well, that's what the gospel seeks to teach us. It's what we seek to learn. And we know that we're not perfect, that we face temptation, and that sometimes, unlike the Lord, we don't resist it. So, in calling to mind our sins, we ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God. People of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are taking away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through our annual observance of Holy Lent, we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden for us in Christ. And by our worthy conduct, we may pursue their good effects. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We sit now to listen to the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures. The first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The priest shall take the pannier from your hand and lay it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then in the sight of the Lord your God you must make this pronouncement. My father was a wandering Armenian. He went down into Egypt to find refuge there. Few in numbers, but there he became a nation, great, mighty and strong. The Egyptians ill-treated us. They gave us no peace and inflicted harsh slavery on us. But we called on the Lord, the God of our fathers. The Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, our toil and our opposite oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with mighty hand and outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us here and gave us this land a land where milk and honey flow. Here then I bring the first fruits of the produce of the soil that you, O Lord, have given me. You must then lay them before the Lord your God and bow down in the sight of the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with me, O Lord, in my distress. Be with me, O Lord, in my distress. He who shelters in the 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High and abides in the shadow of the Almighty says to the Lord, my refuge, my stronghold, my God in whom I trust. Be with me, O Lord, in my distress. Upon you no evil shall fall, no plague approach where you dwell, for you have He has commanded his angels to keep you in all your ways. Be with you, O Lord, in my distress. They shall bear you upon their hands, lest you strike your foot against the stone. On the lion and the viper you will tread and trample the young lion and the dragon. Be with me, O Lord, in my distress. His love he he has set upon me, so I will rescue him. Protect him, for he knows my name. When he calls, I will answer, I am with you. I will save him in distress and give him glory. Be with me, O Lord, in my distress. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Scripture says, The word, that is the faith, we proclaim, is very near to you, and it is on your lips and in your heart. If your lips confess that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart, you are made righteous. By confessing with your lips, you are saved. When scripture says, those who believe in him will have no cause for shame, it makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord, who is rich enough. However, many ask for his help, for everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Stand please for the gospel. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every mouth that comes from the mouth of God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit through the wilderness, being tempted there by the devil for 40 days. During that time, he ate nothing. At the end of it, he was very hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to turn into a loaf. But Jesus replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone. Then, leading him to a height, the devil showed him in a moment of time all the kingdoms of the world and said to him, 
I'll give you all this power and glory, all these kingdoms, for they have been entrusted to me. And I won't give it to anyone I choose. Worship me then, and it shall be yours. But Jesus said, Scripture says, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then he led Jesus to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For Scripture says, he will put his angels in charge of you and guard you. They will hold you on their hands in case you hurst your foot against the stone. But Jesus answered him, it also says, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Having exhausted all these ways of tempting him, the devil left him to return at the appointed time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please have it. The scriptures use two words for time, two different words. One is chronos, where we get words like a posh word for a watch, a chronograph, or in a history book you get a chronology of events. That's, that's the origin of those words. And they use another word too, which is kairos, which is time that we don't count but that the world also turns to and it's the word that's used when it speaks of the activity of God the unfolding of salvation history that's kairos time that we know is passing but we don't have the timetable as it were it's the time table I think sometimes the girls buses use um, and maybe it's the timetable your boys and girls use when it's just five minutes more before I go to bed or get up now which doesn't always happen in our time and in a chronology that we can measure the challenge always is how do those things come together what we have planned and scheduled and what God asks of us you've probably encountered that disjunct and coincidence I, I, I was forced to think about it yesterday morning I, I tend to go and visit my mother on a Saturday morning at some point if I can um, as many of you know she's very elderly, she's 94 but still very independent but her health is, is failing fast and I was asking her how she was feeling and she said well I'm waiting for God's time now she said and I'm sure in caring for elderly relatives many of you have had that experience you've said when, when is the moment that God will ask for this person to come back to him it's, it's, a, it's a, a powerful moment but it's not a one off because there are others of those powerful moments too and the challenge I think given the pace we tend to live our lives at is to find them the desert in the scriptures and the history of the people of Israel is always a place where people go to step back from the world and to encounter God it's always a place where they leave Kronos behind and discover Kairos that's what Moses says the people should do they should take a minute every year and they should say how did we get here it took us 40 years wandering in the desert to realise where we were coming from who we were and where we were going to. I had to take time out to learn that. Remind yourselves of it, Moses says. 
it's important for who you are, who you were, and who you're called to be. Jesus goes into the desert, and his temptation is to play things according to his schedule and not according to God's. He's asked to do a deed of wonder for himself right now. There will be deeds of wonder, but not for himself and not yet. The devil says, have all this power, have it for yourself, and have it now. And he says, no, not for me, and not right now. There will be power, but not for himself, and not right now. And then he's asked to give his life, to prove who he is, and to do it right now. And he says, no, I'm not going to do that. Because what I'm for is to understand what God calls me to and unfold all these important things in my life according to his schedule and not according to my own. And there's a challenge there in that because we want it to be. That's our temptation too. Let's, let's have this done and dusted. Let's get it done. I rush on to something else. And the invitation of Lent is to say, let's um, see if we can attune our schedule to God's schedule. Let's make something special of our lives by recognizing who we are, where we come from, and what we're going to, and how we might get there. There's a challenge in that. And there's a challenge for your boys and girls, your sons and daughters, those that you care for and that you love, because this is a special moment in their lives where something in the unfolding of the plan of God, their call to grow as members of the church, is, is, present, is present in their time and in their world this year. So over the next few months, as they have for the last few months, they'll prepare for a very special day in their lives. They will grow. They will pass that milestone on their lives as young Catholics to grow a little more, to receive the next of the sacraments of initiation, building on their baptism and building towards their confirmation. So God's plan and God's time will touch your plans and your time, and their plans, and their time. It can be a special moment in your time. It will be a more special moment if it's a moment that you look forward to, that you relish, that you enjoy, and that you understand. So we begin a period of particular prayer for your children in these days, and we'll pray each weekend for them. My hope would be that we pray each weekend here together with you so that come that happy day in May we will be ready, growing together as members of the family of God to attune our schedule to God's schedule for us. So that our Lent might be one that we live a little more in God's time and place and presence and a little less for ourselves, we pray for each other and ourselves today. Let's stand to pray for our needs. Keep the church vigilant against all temptations and make her perfect in the service and worship of God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, may all Christian people keep this Lenten time with pe penitence and amendment of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Cleanse the world from the temptations of greed, of power and of pride. 
guide those in positions of authority to know their weakness and be compassionate to the needs of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Bless us at this time with grace to make and to keep a good rule of life during this Lent and beyond. Be ever close to us, to our families, friends and neighbours, to shield us from temptation and lead us in the right way. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Have mercy on all who are greatly tempted to harm themselves or others. Free them from the power of evil and bring them out of the wilderness into the good land of faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the departed who have passed through the temptations of this world and come safely to their rest. May they rejoice in the company of the saints and of all the angelic host. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. To these general intercessions, we add prayer for our own particular and local needs. We remember those who have asked us to pray for them, especially those whom we know to be in particular need at this time. We pray for those who join us online, particularly if they are caring, either as their vocation or within the context of family, for those who are shielding, for those who are unwell, and for those who lack the confidence thus far to mix again in society and in parish. Pray for our young people and for those who teach them, particularly those who are gathered here. Lord will bless and strengthen them in these difficult days to learn and to grow. We pray for the people of Ukraine who find themselves in a war not of their choosing. We ask the Lord to be with them and to give us the generosity of spirit to pray and to support them and that he might turn the minds and hearts of those intent on war to peaceful resolution. And finally we pray for our dead. We remember those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries occur now, especially those we've been asked to remember in prayer. May they all know the presence of God. Lord, hear us. God our Father, be close to your people. Touch our lives that we may recognise your presence. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's stand and pray, my brothers and sisters. 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. Give us the right mind, Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this holy season. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observances, and by overturning the snares of the ancient enemy, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, and so celebrate worthily the Paschal mystery that we may pass over at last to the eternal feast of heaven. And so, in the company of the angels, we sing the hymn of your praise, as together, without, as together with all the saints, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. O Sana, O You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, 
St. Joseph, our spouse, the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Boys and girls, as we end Mass today, I'll give you a copy of the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father Prayer Jesus taught his disciples, and I'll ask you to make a special point of saying that at home each day as you prepare for First Holy Communion. But it's our privilege as the members of the family of God gathered in prayer to pray as Jesus taught us. And so we pray in the words he gave us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Socially distance we offer each other a sign of peace. of God, behold, him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's stand and pray. Renewed by this bread from heaven, by which our faith is nourished, our hope increased, our charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which comes from your mouth. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Could I invite you just for a moment, please, boys and girls, to come forward and for everyone to have a seat. Great. You just stand here, boys and girls. That's lovely. I'm not, I'm not biting today. Great. Okay. Mrs. Dix, nice to see you. Good. Mrs. McLaren, lovely to see you too. Thank you. Great. Okay. So, boys and girls, Lent's an important time for us in the church. Each year, we prepare by prayer, fasting, and giving generously for the celebration of Easter. Jesus died on the cross, and on the third day, he rose from the dead for us. And that's what we will remember. This is a great feast, and we rejoice in the love of God. It's an important time for you. During Lent this year, you'll receive the sacrament of reconciliation, your confession for the first time. We'll celebrate and also receive Holy Communion for the first time when Jesus will come to you in the Holy Eucharist in Holy Communion. To help you prepare well, I'm going to give you a copy of the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Jesus taught this prayer to his friends and his disciples. It reminds us that we need to ask God to forgive us and that we need to forgive other people also reminds us to pray every day to God for our daily bread, that God will give us the help that we need. So now, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment so that during Lent you will try your best to prepare well, to say the Lord's Prayer, and prepare for the sacraments you are to receive. So I'll ask you two questions now. The answer to each question is, if you will, is I will. With the help of your parents and teachers, Will you use these days of Lent so that you'll be ready to receive Jesus in Holy Communion? Will you try to pray the Our Father every day, the prayer that Jesus wants his friends and disciples to pray? To your mums and dads, to those who care for you, I ask also, and the response for you is, we will, if you will. At your child's baptism, you made a promise to bring them up in the practice of our faith. As your child prepares for first confession and first holy communion, will you continue to be faithful to the commitment you made at your child's baptism? Thank you. And to the parish community of St. Conville, I ask you, and the response is, we will, if you will, to the parish community of St. Conville, will you support by your prayer these children and their parents as they use the days of Lent to draw closer to the Lord. I will. Thank you. Boys and girls, I'm going to give you a copy of the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to pray myself. Father, we thank you for the way Jesus taught us to pray. We ask that these children to whom we have presented the Lord's Prayer will always know you as their loving Father. May they always turn to you and follow your paths of love. We make this prayer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Great. Okay, I shall give a pack to each of you. There you are. Uh, Welcome. There you are. So, if you just go back to your seats once you have one. You're welcome. Thank you, boys and girls. Thank you to your mums and dads. Thank you to members of the parish community for being here, for praying together. So, same time, same place next week, and we'll prepare 
over the next few weeks together. All the relevant notices are in the usual places, in the printed bulletin, online and web page and Facebook. Um, the, um, the Pope asked us to remember the people of Ukraine in a particular way, and the chief rabbi of the Ukraine asked his Christian friends to pray uh, one of the Psalms, one of the prayers of, of Judaism, a particular prayer of the Ukrainian Jewish community in their last great persecution under the Nazis, ironically enough. So I made copies of it. It's available in the porch as you leave. It's on a pink sheet. If you'd like to take a, a copy and pray for the people of Ukraine, that would be great. And we've explored ways of getting relief supplies to them, baby uh, necessities, food and so on. It's very difficult to logistically transport stuff to them. Skiaf have set up a fund and they're going to give money to local charities on the ground. So I, I will give you an opportunity to contribute to that next Sunday. I, I just sent a cheque away for £1,000 straight away because the need is great and urgent and I'm sure you'll, you'll help me recoup that. If you give more than £1,000, I'll just send another cheque. So uh, it will be available in the basket here at the front as you leave uh, next Sunday. So I'd ask you to think of, of those in great need at this time. There's also a pack from Skiaf that's got your wee box in it and prayer for others in poverty. And so we have opportunities for prayer, for fasting and for almsgiving. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you if you joined us online. Can I invite you to stand and we'll ask God's blessing. The Lord with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in with our final hymn, number 954. Number 954. Yeah.